Hello. I'm Sally, your host. Welcome to the third board, my master's chess channel. Here I will show you games from great players of the past, and other chess related content. For today's video, my master chose an instructive game of the Soviet Russian Grand Master, and sixth world champion, Mikhail Botvinnik, played in 1943, Sverdlovsk, Russia. His opponent was Isaac Boleslavsky, a Soviet Ukrainian Grand Master. Boleslavsky was a strong player and participated in the first candidates tournament of 1950, Budapest, seven years after today's game. In 1953, he also participated in the candidates tournament in Zurich. So, let's begin. Mikhail Botvinnik has white and starts with Pawn to e4 Isaac Boleslavsky responds with Pawn to c5 The Sicilian defense characteristic move And after Knight to f3 Knight to c6 d4 C takes on d4 Knight takes on d4 Knight to f6 Knight to c3 d6 We have on this board the classical variation The opening continues with Bishop to e2 After this move Main responses for black are Pawn to e6, which leads to the Scavenigian variation by transposition Pawn to g6, which leads to the Dragon variation by transposition And Pawn to e5, the Boleslavsky variation, named after today's second player, and introduced in the 1940s this was also the variation employed by Isaac Boleslavsky in this game. The game continues with Knight to b3 The Boleslavsky variation old main line. Nowadays, retreating the knight to f3 is more popular. Black continues with Bishop to e7 Castles Black does the same. If white plays now, bishop to e3, black usually responds with bishop to e6, in preparation for pawn to d5. However in this game, white chose a different path. Pawn to f4. White makes more difficult for black to play pawn to d5. After pawn to f4, Black usually switches his plans, and try for active playing on the queen side. Let's return to the game. Black plays. E takes on f4. According to Stockfish, pawn to a5 was also good. Apparently, Boleslavsky wanted to avoid white's pawn to f5. But, according to the engine, f5 would not bring much benefit for white. The game could evolve like this. Pawn to a4 Knight to d2 d5 Knight takes on d5 Knight takes knight Pawn takes knight Queen takes on d5 and the position would be slightly better for black according to the wise fish. Let's return to the game. After pawn takes on f4, white continues with. Bishop takes on f4. Bishop to e6. 
Bishop to d3. Knight to e5. Threatening to capture the d3 bishop. King to h1. Avoiding the diagonal g1 a6. Instead of king to h1, other good moves for white here were. Bishop to e2, avoiding the capture by the knight. And h3, defending the g4 square. Let's return to the game. Black continues with. Queen to b6. Queen to e2. This is the first move of a plan to sacrifice a pawn for faster development. Of course, Boleslavsky could also refuse the offer. But in the actual game, Boleslavsky accepted it, and as result, after six moves, but Vinnik had doubled rooks on the f-file, his dark square bishop was relocated to d4, and white's active light square bishop was eliminated from the board. Can you see but Vinnik's plan? If you wish to try to analyze the position, pause the video now. After queen to e2, black continues with. Knight takes on d3. C takes on d3. Bishop takes on b3. Bishop to e3. White not only threatens the queen, he also opens the f-file, and will be able to relocate his bishop to a better square, on d4. This move is better than retaking the piece immediately with the pawn. Black continues with Queen to b4 Pawn takes bishop Queen takes on b3 Black is now a pawn up, but he lost several tempi, and the good light square bishop. Rook to a5 With the idea of transferring this rook to the king side. Queen to e6 Bishop to d4 White also could have taken the a7 pawn, but but Vinnik did not want to lose time. Bishop to d8 Rook from a, to f5 This is the final position of Bitvinik's maneuver that started six moves ago. Despite losing in material, white has the initiative. But I cannot say with certainty that he planned all this since the beginning. Let's continue the game. Boleslavsky plays Knight to d7 If instead of knight to d7, black played, pawn to a5, for example, white could start the following combination. Rook takes on f6 Bishop takes on f6 Rook takes bishop Pawn takes rook Knight to d5 apparently with strong attack but after rook from f to c8 opening f8 for the king to retreat it also threatens mate on c1 h3 rook to c1 check king to h2 rook to c5 Offering back material for the dangerous bishop. The position would be equal according to Stockfish. Let's return to the game. Boleslavsky probably wanted to avoid these lines that begin with rook takes knight, when he played, knight to d7. And he is now also able to relocate his knight to e5, where it will block the strong d4 bishop. White continues with Queen to g4 According to Stockfish, 
knight to d5 was also good. Black plays. Knight to e5. Threatening the queen. Queen to g3. Instead of retreating the queen, it was better to capturing the knight according to the engine. But after. Pawn takes bishop. Rook takes on f7. Queen takes rook. Rook takes queen. Rook takes rook. The position would be equal. Let's return to the game. After queen to g3, black continues with f6. Knight to d5. Pawn to a6. Pawn to a5 was better. Queen to h3. White is threatening to play rook takes on f6. Rook to e8. Protecting the queen. But according to Stockfish, retreating the queen to e8 was better. g4. Threatening pawn to g5. h6. Preventing it. White continues with Queen to g3 Preparing pawn to h4 White's natural plan is to continue the advance of kingside pawns. Instead of queen to g3, it was also good to play knight to f4. Black continues with Rook to c8 Threatening to invade the 7th rank. Bishop to c3. Preventing black's rook from coming to c2. However, according to the wise fish, it was an inferior move. It was better for white to play, pawn to h4, immediately. Black's queenside pawns are going to advance, and the c3 bishop could become a target. Stockfish evaluates this position as better for black. The game continues with a5 h4 b5 queen to h3 White's threat, of pawn to g5, has become more dangerous with the queen on h3. Can you see how dangerous it is? I'm going to show you now, some variations that begin with white's pawn to g5. If you wish to try to analyze by yourself before that, you should pause the video now. If black plays a random move like, pawn to a4, the game could continue with g5 Black can take this pawn with the h pawn, with the f pawn, or do another move. First, we will analyze variations that start with, f takes on g5. After white plays, h takes on g5. If black retook the pawn with the bishop, then the game could continue with, rook to f8 check. King to h7. If black played rook takes rook, then he would lose his queen. Queen takes queen. Rook takes queen. Rook takes rook. And white would have overwhelming advantage. Let's return to the beginning of this variation. After pawn takes on g5, Black could play, rook takes on c3, sacrificing the exchange, and avoiding the variation I showed you before. The game could continue with b takes on c3, bishop takes on g5, knight to c7, 
forking the queen and the rook, and white would be much better. Let's return to the beginning of this variation. After white plays, pawn takes on g5, black could also play, knight takes on d3. And the game could continue with g takes on h6, queen takes on h6, rook to h5, rook takes on c3, rook takes on h6, knight to f2 check. Rook takes knight. Rook takes queen check. Rook takes rook. And despite the fireworks, black would still be losing. Let's return to the beginning, and analyze what would happen if black took the g5 pawn with the h pawn. This is the worst variation. The game could continue with h takes on g5 rook takes on c3 pawn takes rook g6 pawn takes pawn threatening f7 pawn takes rook rook takes on f5 knight to g6 Queen to h6 Queen to f7 Rook to g5 Bishop takes on f6 Knight takes bishop check And the position would be lost for black Now, let's return to the beginning, and analyze what would happen if black does not take the g5 pawn Instead of pawn takes pawn, one of the moves black could play here is, rook takes on c3. The game could continue like this. b takes on c3. g6. g takes on h6. Pawn takes rook. Queen to g3 check. Knight to g4. Rook takes on f5 King to h8 Queen takes knight And, according to Stockfish, the position would be equal But I would prefer to be white here Wouldn't you? Wow, those were a lot of variations I hope you are still with me There are more variations of course but those will suffice for now. Let's return to the game. After white's queen to h3, we have this position. According to Stockfish, black is better, but as we saw, the position is delicate, and black must be careful. White's threat is of course, pawn to g5. My question for you is, what is the best move for black in order to defend his position? Because there are too many defensive moves black can play, I decided to limit black's choices for now, to only two moves. They are King to h7 and Knight to f7 One of these moves can save the game. But the other, although is not a blunder, is a mistake. Can you find the correct move? In the actual game, Boleslavsky chose the wrong move, and Botvinnik started a combination that ultimately brought him decisive advantage. Can you avoid the same mistake? Did you like this game so far? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want notifications of more content like this, 
please subscribe to this channel. I shall narrate this game's conclusion in the next video. Thank you, and see you again in part 2. Goodbye.